Okay, so we've got three questions that can be answered by the remainder. Now remember that you can only get a remainder after you do what? Divide, right? You get the remainder by after you do the division. So remember that every one of these, if they're going to be answered by using the remainder, every one of these is going to require that you first perform some, some synthetic division. Okay? Because the only kind of division we're working with is synthetic division in this, in this section, right? So let me give you a little heads up. Every semester on this test, I get a test that has no synthetic division on it. The entire chapter is synthetic division. But there is another form of division with polynomials. It's long division with polynomials. And, and many of you from in high school <laughs> learned how to use long division. So, so what happens is you don't really study synthetic division because it's not hard. If it's not hard, you don't study it. You don't put forth much, much effort. Then you get to the test and you panic and don't remember how to do it. So you just resort to anything. And that one thing that people seem to turn to is long division with polynomials. Let me assure you that even though these problems could be done with long division of polynomials, I will not accept long division of polynomials in a chapter devoted to synthetic division of polynomials. Okay? So do not go from one to the other. You must use synthetic division on every problem in this chapter, in this section. Okay, so let's get that out of the way really quickly. So if you already know long division of polynomials, remember you're not allowed to use it. You've got to use synthetic division here, okay? So you know who you are. I don't yet, but I'll find out on testing. Okay, what we're going to do then is we're going to look at some questions that can be answered using synthetic division because synthetic division in a, of itself is only a tool. When you divide using synthetic division, you'll get a quotient and a remainder, but there are also lots of other things that you can do with synthetic division, some things that you can look at using synthetic division to answer some questions. So the purpose here is to introduce you to these ideas, but mainly just to get you to do more synthetic division so that you can kind of build it into your system or your tools that you have. So the synthetic division portion of this won't change at all. What thing am I going to be looking at to answer these questions? The remainder. And that's all I'm worried about, is looking at the remainder. So I'm going to do one problem and demonstrate every one of these things. Ah, well, there are two. Okay? Two problems, Senator, if I have one of these. So your job is to know which one is which. Now, they all are answered in the same way, by looking at the remainder. So the synthetic division doesn't change. They're all answered by looking at the remainder. But you've got to know which one is which. If you just answer all three questions when I ask you for one specific one, I will count it wrong. Right? Where'd you go today? I don't want to know everywhere you went today. Where were you at 3 o'clock? I don't want to know everywhere you were, right, for the whole day. I want to know that specific question. And that's what you need to pay focus on when you're working with these. The first of these is even called the remainder theorem. And let me describe what the remainder theorem does. Now, we've already would have performed our synthetic division, right? We don't need new notes for that. So, the remainder theorem says that f of k... Now, you've seen k before. That's the thing you're dividing by, isn't it? Okay. Now, notice it doesn't say f of x this time. Remember that f of x meant that you had some function and the variable was an x. Well, this time it says we've replaced that x with our k. So that's, so that's why it says f of k now, right? So we don't have x's anymore. We've used, we're put, we put in our k. f of k equals r. Now, this is what the theorem says, f of k equals r. Now, let me explain what that means. It means that if you replaced every x with k, now, remember, k is, gonna, k is a number, right? It's not a letter. It's just 
I'm using K to mean the generic form of it, right? The thing you were dividing by, the thing that went in the box. If you replaced every X with your K, did the math, right? Did all those exponents, did all the multiplication, combined all the, all the numbers, everything. Did all the math all the way across. You would get R. And what does R stand for in our little world here? Synthetic? The remainder. So instead of doing all that math, because we have things raised to the fifth power, then multiplied times negative 5, and then added to something else raised to the fourth power, minus 2, right? It's just, there's a lot of math going on in, in, in these if you evaluated each one of these. But you don't have to. What you can do instead is simply perform synthetic division, and the answer is going to be the what? Remainder. The remainder. Period. Okay? So let's look at one of these. Say, for example, we have says k equals negative 1. That's nice. I don't even have to pull it away from the x, right? They just tell me k equals negative 1. For the function f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 2. So that's our function that I'm dividing into, and there's our k. So we put our k in a box, and oh, do I have any missing terms from my function? No. Now this one's a pretty simple function. You could plug that in and pretty easily and work this one out, but normally they'd be a lot more complex. So what's my first coefficient? One. Positive 1. Good. What's my second one? Negative two. Negative 2. And my third one? Positive 2. Skip a line and draw a line. Remember the positive 1 won't change, just comes straight down. Then I multiply. Positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Minus 2 gives me negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And positive 3 plus 2 is positive 5. And I don't even care about this stuff over here. I'm not going to put the x's in. I'm not going to worry about x minus k or any of that other junk. I am only interested in this last number, which is the what? Remainder. Because the question asked, asked here is, it says, use the remainder theorem and synthetic division to find f of k. Well, f of k simply means the what? Remainder. But this is not how you write your answer. You wouldn't just put the, fi put the 5 in. You're going to put your answer as f of, now what was my k? Negative 1 equals what number? And that's your answer. And literally what that means is that if you put a negative 1 in place of all of these x's and then worked it out, you'd get 5. Okay. But synthetic vision is a lot faster and easier than, than putting in all those numbers and doing all that math. Now, this one doesn't look like it would have been because it's a fairly simple function. But look at some of the functions we did, whether it were x to the fifth or some kind of big numbers like that. Those would be very difficult to do. And negative 1 is not hard to work with. But what if that had been 27? Right? You want to raise 27 to the third power? Your calculator probably can't do it. But synthetic division can. All right? So it makes it very easy to work with large numbers and to be able to do very complex operations because your answer is always the what? The remainder. Okay? Now, pay attention on course compass. Because if they already have the f of and the equals business there, what are you going to type in? Just the 5, right? The remainder, okay? So be careful about what it is they have. Sometimes they'll have it, have it all ready for you to go, and you just type in the number. Sometimes they might not. Okay? All right. So that's the remainder theorem. I don't think it needs any more explanation because that's all there is. Remainder theorem says the answer is the remainder. remainder. Duh, okay? All right, let's look at the second one. The second one that you're going to have, let me make sure I have them in the right order here on, on the... Oh, lots of remainder there. Okay? The second one is actually asking a question. And it says, the question is, is K a zero... a 
of the function. And you may want a little star next to this one because this is the most important one of the three. Because we're going to use this one over and over and over again. This is the key to being able to solve equations using synthetic vision later. Okay? So, is k a zero of the function? Well, my key word here is right there, zero. Now, work with me here. Use your mind. Think about it. The answer in all three of these is the what thing? Remainder. The remainder. And I want to know, is it a zero of the function? So what do you think I'm hoping to happen? The remainder equals what? Zero. zero. Exactly. So, is k a zero of the function? Yes. If r equals zero. And only if r equals zero. So what if r equals any other number? Then no, it is not a zero. So these are yes, no questions. You're just going to click yes or no. Yes, if you get what? Zero, zero as the zero. remainder. Not just zero, right? But zero as the what? Remainder. No, if you get what? Number. Any other number. Who cares what it is, right? The, I'm only interested in one number. Third one is x minus k, so that whole thing, a factor of f of x. This is our second one. Now think about it. factors. Dealt with factors a lot in this course already. A factor is anything that divides in what? Evenly, right? Okay, to the thing that you started with. So anything that divides in evenly to the thing you started with. Well, if you're performing division and the thing divides in evenly, what is the remainder going to be? Which, what's the number for nothing? Zero, right? Okay, so look at this one. So is k a factor of f of x? Yes. If r equals 0, this, that should sound very familiar to you. Why? It's the same as the, is it a 0? So if you get one of them, then you automatically know the other one, right? So it's yes if r equals 0. Because if it's going to be a factor, it has to divide in evenly. And it's the definition to divide in evenly is to have a remainder of 0. Okay? So, if r equals 0. So, both of these are identical in form. But you've got to know which one they're really asking you for, right? Is it a 0 and is it a factor are two very different ideas. But they both have the same answer. Yes, if it's 0. No, if it's what? Anything else, yeah. So, let's look at an example of at those. And I'm going to have you answer both questions because you can. Okay? So, we have f of x equals x to the third plus 7x squared plus 7x minus 15. Give me a little semicolon. And then it says k equals negative 5. And this one says use synthetic division to decide whether the given number is a 0 of the function. Okay, so we want to know is it a 0? So how do you define something as being a zero? You get a remainder of what? Zero. Okay? So keep in mind what you're, what you're supposed to get before you start working the question, and it'll kind of give you an idea to trigger what you're doing. Okay? So we're going to put our negative 5 in the box. Not going to change the sign because it didn't have an x with it, right? Are there any missing terms? Nope. So positive 1, positive 7, positive 7 negative 15, skip a line and draw a line. The one, positive one comes down, that first one never changes. Positive one times negative five is negative five. Plus seven gives you positive two. 
Positive 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, plus 7 gives you negative 3, and negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15, and 15 minus 15 gives you 0, and I'm not interested in any of this junk over there. Why? Because the answer is always based on the remainder. So what is my remainder? So my question was, is it a 0? Well, was, if the remainder was 0, then what were you going to answer? Yes. yes. K is a zero. And that's your only answer. Just yes. That's all you need. Okay. All right. Now, you will have fractions. Let's see what I'm. The one about the factor is actually called the factor theorem, by the way. They'll use that word. What do you think the factor theorem wants to know? <laughs> is it a factor, right? Okay, now, look at this one. It says, use synthetic division to decide whether negative two-fifths is a zero of... f of x equals 25x to the fourth plus 31x to the second plus 29x plus 12. You hate fractions, but I'm going to be very nice to you and show you a trick. I've already shown you this trick before. When we were solving equations and clearing fractions from the equations, do you remember I showed you a pattern and told you you could use it over and over and over again if you'd learn it? What's the name of that pattern that we use to clear the fractions? Divide, then multiply, right? Well, here's the clue. If I'm going to get a 0 at the end, and this is a 12, there's no way that, that, that my answer can stay a fraction. It's got to turn into a 12, right? Well, and what that means is that... If at any point you're going through here and the divide then multiply thing doesn't work because it's got to turn into a whole number, that means it can't be a fraction. So every time you multiply, if that divide then multiply pattern doesn't work to eliminate the fraction, then you don't care because the minute it stops working is the minute it's not going to turn into a zero. Right? So let me show you what I mean. Negative two-fifths goes in the box. We get 20, positive 25, uh-oh, and then what? Zero, because there is no x to the third, plus 31, plus 29, plus 12. Skip a line and draw a line. Positive 25 just comes straight down. Positive times a negative is negative. And when I'm multiplying with a whole number times a fraction, always try that divide then multiply to see if the fraction will go away. Will 25 divide evenly by 5? Yes. Yeah, 25 divided by 5 is 5 times 2 is 10, negative 10. Plus the 0 just stays negative 10. Negative times a negative is a positive. Will 10 divide by 5? Yeah, 10 divided by 5 is 2 times 2 is 4. Combine those, you get positive 35. Positive times a negative is negative. 35 divided by 5 is... 7 times 4, I'm sorry, times 2 is 14. What's 29 minus 14 going to leave you? 15. Positive 15, good. Positive times a negative is negative. 15 divided by 5 is 3 times 2 is 6. And 12 minus 6 is positive 6. And all I'm interested in is, is the things. But do you see the divide and multiply pattern at work here? Really makes it easy. Okay, what is the remainder? So, is negative two-fifths a zero of this function? No. Because it's only defined as a zero if the remainder is a zero. Okay. Are you always going to be able to use that? Yep. Because if it doesn't work, then it's not going to be a zero. Let's say we were dividing along, say that this, had, this one had been a 7. 
Does 7 divide by 5? Nope. Then automatically the answer is no because it ain't going to turn into a 0 no matter what. Okay? So you can get a clue. If it, if it stops working, then you, stop, you can stop the problem. You don't even care. Okay? All right. Now, if you're deciding if the polynomial is, is a factor, I wanted to show you what that looks like. It says use the factor theorem and synthetic division to decide whether the second polynomial is a factor of the first. And they give you negative x to the third plus 4x minus 15 semicolon x plus 3. So we want to see if this one is a factor of this one, right? So make sure you get the right one you're dividing by. But it's easy to tell because the one you're dividing by is always going to be the, just the plain old x plus a number or x minus a number. So I'm going to use synthetic division. So what's going to go in my box? Negative 3. Negative three. Good, because I, this time I had to take it away from an x, didn't I? Which always changes the sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have any missing terms in my original function? You bet I do. There aren't any x squareds, are there? So negative 1, then what? 0, Zero then positive 4, and then negative 15. Bring down my negative 1. It never changes the first term. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, plus 0 is positive 3. Positive 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, plus 4 is negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15, minus 15 is 0, and that's the thing I'm interested in, not any of that other stuff, right? Did I get a remainder of 0? Yes. Then is that this thing a factor of this thing? Yes. And that's the answer to your question, just plain old yes. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to warn you, if you an example and help me solve this, you know they're going to take you through a lot more complicated ideas than what I'm giving you here. So if you do it, that's fine. If you need that extra help, you're, you might find out that it's just better if you do it their way because I don't make any sense to you. Perfectly fine. I don't care. Right? I'm never going to worry about how you get it done. I want to worry about getting it done. Some of both. Some of both. Well, let, let's just look and see. Here, if they were doing view example, they tell you about the factor theorem, right? Then, so they write synthetic division a little bit differently. They, they use an actual division symbol, but, but then other than that, looks the same. And so, according to the remainder theorem, oh yeah, they give you a lot more information than you need. Okay. So they do it basically the same way, but then they give you a bunch more information that you don't need in order to answer the question. What do you need to know to answer the question? The remainder. The remainder. And they're going to give you a lot more than that. Okay? So they're going to over-explain everything. But they do the basic math is exactly the same way I did. Okay? All right. Well, then I will set up your homework. Do your homework. Now, listen. Okay, we've got a couple of things to talk about.